Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss properties of task environments in artificial intelligence with the help of simple examples. There are mainly seven properties of task environments in artificial intelligence. They are fully observable versus partially observable, single agent versus multi agent, deterministic versus stochastic, static versus dynamic, discrete versus continuous. Episodic versus sequential and known versus unknown environments. We will discuss each of these things in detail one by one. First one is fully observable versus partially observable. We have already discussed the components of agent. Agent contains sensors. Based on the sensor input, it will make a decision and then it will perform those actions with the help of actuators. If the agent's sensors give complete access to the environment at any given point of time, then it is called as fully observable. That means sensors can sense the complete environment at any given point of time. Such kind of environments are convenient because the agent need not maintain the internal state to keep track of what has happened previously and what may happen in future. Because of a noisy environment or inaccurate sensors or the sensors may not sense the complete environment, in such cases we may not be able to get the complete information about the environment. Such state is known as partially observable environment in this case. We will take an example to understand fully observable and partially observable environments. So in this case uh, uh, we will be considering the vacuum agent. There are two locations are there, A and B. A and B may or may not be dirty. And there is an AI agent which may be present in location A or location B. Whenever AI agent senses there is a dirt in a particular location, it will execute a suck action so that the room will become clean. Whenever it finds that a particular room is clean, it will execute either a right action or the left action so that it can move to other room here. Now, in this case, uh, what can happen is uh, this is the complete environment that is location A and location B. If this uh, sensor can sense the complete environment that is location A and location B, then it is called as fully observable. If it can sense only location A or location B based on its presence, then it is called as partially observable here. In this case, it can sense only either A or B. So that's the reason it is called as partially observable environment. If you put some kind of uh, sensors in such a way that it can sense both location A and B, then it is called as fully observable environment here. If there are no sensors, then it is called as unobservable environment. Coming back to the next uh, type of environment that is known as uh, single agent versus uh, multi agent. If uh, an AI system has uh, a single agent to solve a given problem, then it is called as single agent. If there are two or more agents are there in a given AI problem, then it is called as multi-agent. If you consider this crossword puzzle, uh, there is a need of single agent to solve this one. So it is called as a single agent problem. But if you consider the chess, uh, there are two agents are required to solve that chess game here. So definitely it is called as a multi-agent environment. When we consider multi-agent environment, uh, there are two possibilities are there. One is called as a competitive multi-agent environment. Another one is known as cooperative multi-agent environment. Let's take an example of chess here. As said earlier, uh, there are uh, two agents are required to play the chess uh, game. Uh, let's say that A is one agent and B is another agent. What will happen in this case is uh, both A and B are trying to maximize their performance by minimizing the other uh, agent's performance here. So what they are doing is they are competing with each other. So such uh, environment is called as uh, competitive multi-agent environment here. There is another kind of environment as said that is a cooperative multi-agent environment. In automated taxi driving environment, uh, two or more agents uh, trying to avoid the collisions so that they can maximize the performance of all agents here. If there is a collision, the performance of both uh, will uh, decrease here. So they are trying to avoid the collision so that they can maximize the performance of both the agents here. So this is called as cooperative multi-agent environment in this case. 
The third property is uh, deterministic versus uh, stochastic. So what is deterministic is, if the next state of the environment is completely determined by the current state as well as the action executed, then it is called as deterministic. Let's take an example of this one. The current state is what? The agent is present in location A. Location A and B, both of them are dirty here. This is the current environment. Let's assume that uh, this uh, AI agent will sense that uh, the location A is dirty. It will execute the suck action here. Now, once it executes the suck action, what will happen? The location A will become clean. Location B is still dirty and the agent is still present in location A. So, that will be the next state. So, based on the current environment and the action executed by this agent, we have determined the next state. So, it is called as deterministic uh, uh, environment here. If it is not possible, then it is called as stochastic environment. Coming back to the next one that is known as uh, static versus uh, dynamic. In static uh, environment, uh, the environment will not change if uh, a certain number of actions were executed by the agent. Uh, but in a dynamic environment, uh, the state of that environment will change here. For example, if we consider the vacuum agent or the crossword puzzle, the environment will not change. There will be two locations in uh, vacuum uh, world environment. And uh, this is how the pattern will look like for the crossword puzzle here. So, they will not change. So, that's the reason it is called as a static environment. But if we consider the taxi driving environment, in this case, uh, based on different situation, for example, there may be automatic rainfall or you can say that the ambulance may come, police may come or the pedestrians may come in between. Because of such kind of things, the environment uh, will change. So, that's the reason it is called as a dynamic environment in this case. The next property is the discrete versus continuous. The discrete versus continuous is determined based on the state of the environment, the percept received by the agent and the action executed by the agent here. Consider an example of a chess environment. The chess environment has a finite number of distinct states here. The agent will perceive the discrete number of percepts and the agent will execute the discrete number of actions here. So, because of all these things, we can say that the chess environment is discrete in this case. But when you consider the taxi driving environment or automated taxi driving environment, the environment is continuously changing. So, the state is continuous here as well as the percepts and the actions executed by the agent is also continuous here. Coming back to the next property that is known as episodic versus uh, sequential. In episodic task environment, the agent's experience is divided into atomic episodes. So, agent will receive the percept in one episode and then he will perform a single action here. And the percept and action executed in this episode does not depend on the action taken in the uh, previous episodes here. The meaning of this one is, uh, uh, let's take an example of a classification task. Uh, where we want to diagnose a particular person is having disease or no. So, whenever a person comes to a hospital, the AI agent will perceive the environment. Based on the current person's percept, the AI agent will decide whether the person is having disease or no. Now, whenever a next person comes, the AI agent will again perceive the environment. Based on his percept, again the AI agent will decide whether the person is having disease or no but not on the previous person's percept here. Such kind of environments are known as episodic environments. But there are some environments where the current decision affects the future decisions. Such kind of environments are known as sequential. For example, if you consider chess or taxi driving environment, uh, the current action whatever we perform in these uh, cases uh, will affect the future decisions also. They may be short term or long term, but definitely they will affect in future. So, such kind of environments are called as sequential environments in this case. Coming back to the last property that is known as known versus unknown environment. In known environment, uh, the outcome of all the actions are given. That is, what is the percept for this particular percept? What should be the action? All these things are already given. If such kind of things are there, it is known as uh, the known environment. In unknown environment, definitely we have to give 
what is the percept and for this percept what should be the action uh, to be executed of course we have to give it but it uh, we may not be given uh, all uh, percepts and associated actions here a few percept and actions will be given based on that the agent will learn over a period of time and then it will make a decisions uh, later here so in known environment all possible outcomes for all actions is given but in uh, unknown definitely we have to give few but uh, what unknown environment will do is uh, they will uh, learn over a period of time and then they will make a decisions in this case so this is how uh, the known and unknown environment will look like in this uh, video i have discussed what are the different uh, properties of uh, task environments in artificial intelligence i hope the concept is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching